This is going to be a special, special talk. Uh, it's uh, going to be a fireside chat, a Q&A format with our beloved Igor. First of all, give it up for Igor. I mean, he's coming over from California. Hello. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, evening, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. It's a Q&A, but it's going to be you who's going to be asking the question. So that's the special occasion. So a QR code has been shared in the, in the past few breaks. And you can use the QR code to sign in on uh, Slido. And there you can either enter your own questions or you can upvote existing questions. And so the questions that are upvoted most are going to be the questions that will be asked to Igor. So if you still have a question that you would like to ask to Igor, now is the time to do so. So please feel free to scan the QR code. Or you can go to slido.com as well and enter the code NGBE. That works as well. Uh, Carmen has also prepared some of the questions, which we'll go into first. Uh, okay. That's all good. We're okay. Perfectly imperfect. Perfectly imperfect. Exactly. That's the, <laughs> that's the theme of the conference. Uh, so thank you, Igor, for being here. Thank you for your... Igor also consented, like, no moderation. He's open to all questions, which is really awesome. Just stick to the code of conduct. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but thanks for for that encouragement, and thank you for making this happen for the community. So uh, with that, we can go to Carmen. Uh, so the questions will be segmented in three parts. So the first part is going to be about the past of Angular. The second part is about the present of Angular. And the third part is going to be about the future of Angular. So if you sign on on Slido, you will actually see that there's three rooms. Each room corresponds to one of the parts. Uh, so feel free to enter your uh, questions in the right part, and we'll make sure to get to them. So with that. Uh, Anything you want to add, Igor, before we start? And uh, I'm just happy to be here. The last time I was here was 2016, and yeah. this conference made a really huge impression on me. So I've been trying to get back for many years, and it never worked out. And this year, I was like, I must come. So wow. I'm happy that I was able to make it. And thank you for organizing such an awesome event. Oh, thank you for being here. Igor had to go through four flights eh, to get here. So again, kudos for, uh, for being here <laughs> and for answering. All right. Thank you, Igor. All right, Carmen, you want to start with your questions on the past? And while Carmen is doing so, feel free to still add your questions eh, to the Slido. Yeah, I can start. I actually wanted to say that I also added a fourth dimension to, uh, to our fireside chat, which is the Angular community. Just It just didn't feel right to, to leave it outside. Um, but um, I would include those questions in, in, in the three uh, categories on Slido, there isn't there isn't a category for that, but it just it didn't feel right to leave it out like yeah outside of the format. Um, Igor, do you? I, I was thinking we should like do some introductions. So I was thinking um, I can introduce you, you can introduce me, and then we both introduce Jurgen. Ooh, okay, <laughs> improvisation. Sure, I'll start. Yes. Yeah, all the way. You know, <laughs> <laughs> perfectly imperfect. Yeah, totally. Um, go ahead, start. Or actually, I will start because you're our guest. Um, mm. So, um, yes, I, um, what do I say about you, Igor? Well, yeah, I know, I know. Um, so for those of you who do not know, Igor is actually an excellent cook. He knows how to make strobe waffles. He's very good at it. And he uses like an um, ice cream waffle maker to <laughs> actually make the dough. He's really good at it. So we have this plan that next year he will join again. And then we will take a waffle workshop and he will be, he will be doing the, the straw waffles. That was not the original plan. I was supposed to come to, to, to be, uh, oh, to, to learn how to do Belgian waffles. And Carmen's going to do strobe waffles, and I will teach crepes, because I know how to make crepes. But the plan changed since yesterday. Oh, OK. <laughs> today, all the plans are changing today, so it just goes with the theme. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. That was a fun fact. So can I introduce you? Yes, go okay. ahead. So Carmen, for those of you that don't know, has been around for a long time in the Angular community. Uh, I think I met her in. 2012, I want to say, in, in, at a conference in uh, uh, Belgium. Uh, no. Yes, oh. DevOps. Bel DevOps, yes, Antwerp. Mm -hmm. In Antwerp. Uh, yeah. And 
she kind of stood out and, and just kept on appearing in all these events. And then she just became a very big part of the Angular community and, and big part of NGBE, organizer of various conferences and meetups and educator. Uh, she's excellent at, at understanding complex topics and explaining them to developers in terms that are understandable. And we became friends uh, over the years and she showed me how to make strobe waffles, among many other things. Uh, and yeah, it's such a pleasure to, to be here. And I, I, was, uh, I was hoping to see Carmen in person, but it's just the situation today is so weird that we made a plan that we'll see each other in person uh, the next time it's possible. Yeah. You're hired, Igor. You can be my, you can be my uh, PR manager. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you want to start with Jorgen? Yes. Okay. Um, the only thing I can think of saying about Jürgen is that everybody loves Jürgen. We really yeah. do. Everybody loves Jürgen. Yeah. He's, he's one of the most kind people I, I know. He, he's a wonderful person and he loves our team so much. He's, he's really an inspiration. Uh, I always feel that I want to be a better person uh, when, I, when I see him. So, yeah. Yeah, and just I can only confirm that. And ever since I, I came, I came to NGB in 2016 by accident. I was I was filling in for Jules, who was supposed to come, a member of the the team at the time, and she couldn't make it, so she asked me to come. And it was last minute, but I was in Europe already, so I came. And there was this tall guy, kind of skinny, and he was just like radiating love. Uh, and I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> this is strange. Anyway, it turned out that the event was reading love as well, and then we just ended up talking a lot, and I ended up learning so much from Jürgen. Uh, he claims that he learns from me, but that's not the case. He just asked the right questions so that I can ask, answer in a smart way, and then he's like, oh, Igor, but it's really his questions that teach me things. <laughs> So it's been it's been an honor to to collaborating with with Jurgen over the years and yeah our Jurgen is amazing so oh, thank, thank you. you so much yeah speechless thank you so much for the kind words and uh, yeah it's the feeling is very mutual eh? I mean I, I don't know like not many people know but Igor is very very supported behind the scenes as well for communities uh, especially also for organizers thank you so much for always being available. Um, it really, really has a big impact on our team and on the entire event as well. So um, I do not agree. We still learn a lot from you. It's not the other way around. <laughs> it's it's uh, beneficial. But, uh, it's yeah, OK, but it, it's been amazing. So thank you so much for making this uh, to the event that it is today. And also thank you, Carmen, uh, for joining remotely. We know how tough it is for you right now in the moment. But uh, yeah, we appreciate you being here remotely as well with us today to uh, yeah, to make this happen. And also for recording the intro video, um, because it was only just a few days ago that Carmen uh, knew that she wouldn't be able to make it. And uh, so we had to pivot a lot. And Carmen, she worked all night to record those videos. Eh? So uh, please also give it up for Carmen if you can. No, no, it's uh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> and yeah. This is also all about you, eh? so if you talk about love, well, I think this is the biggest example of all of you uh, showing up here, being friendly to each other, and that's, it's not us, yeah, we kind of, we can radiate it, but it doesn't happen if, if it's not for you, the audience, so thank you also for being the, be the, like, the best community in the world that's admitted. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do we still want to do the polls or do you want me to go Let, straight into Let's do the, oh yeah, we want to learn the about you. Let's do just so yeah. that we get people into, mm. into the app. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we have a couple of polls uh, in Slido, live polls, so I'm not sure if folks um, yeah. can access can them. We, can we switch yeah. over to the QR code for a moment? Switch yeah. To the live polls. Per perfect. And yeah. So this is an interactive way. So if you can join, you can actually answer. So we'll have three questions for the audience because we also want to learn about you. And then Igor also knows like who all of us are, uh, where did we come from? So the first question, oh, look at this. You're already <laughs> mastering it. So, and the more answers one uh, or more, yeah, times the same answer is, um, 
is entered, the bigger it becomes. So it's like a, a bubbly system. Uh, wow. So the first question is, where are you joining from? Yeah, what city are you from? Lots or of country? Yes. Lots of locals. Yeah. So and the reason we are, we are doing this is we want this to be as interactive as possible. And doing it at scale is hard. And there's this application called Slido, which is actually a Slovak company. I'm from Slovakia. Not my company, but I'm from Slovakia. And I'm very proud of them. And it's an Angular application. Uh, so all of this is Angular experience that we get to share now. And it also helps us to collect your feedback and, and collect high quality questions. Uh, so please log in, use the QR code to jump in, and uh, we'll do a few of these quick polls, and then there's Q&A for three sections. So there are actually three rooms, and we'll transition between the rooms over the course of this session. Lots of locals. Locals won. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We're a very local event, it seems. So we have uh, Ghent on first place. Uh, and on second, well, no, Brussels on second place. So let's, uh, uh, but we have Ghent twice, once in the English spelling, once in the, the Flemish spelling. Uh, then Brussels, Kortrijk, Antwerp. Uh, so we have all provinces here, yeah? Hasselt, Mechelen, and then all, all the other ones. So do we have anyone? Oh, Maastricht, uh, Berlin. Germany, any other? Cologne, yeah, all Cologne. right. Austria, Austria, uh -huh. Netherlands again. London, yeah, London. Jurgen's living room. Oh, well, <laughs> that's kind of unexpected. <laughs> uh, oh, brilliant! But uh, cool. Thank you. Now we know where you're from. So let's jump to the second let's, one. Okay, let's go to the second question. All right. <laughs> so if you just stay in the app, it will transition with us for yes. you. So the second question is, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? Wow. Wow. Epic. Ooh, epic. Oh, look at the emojis work. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that one. That's a good one. <laughs> I think the person who's doing Epic is probably the person from your hands living room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there could be correlation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for the first HTML to show up for HTML sanitization check from, from the audience. Uh, <laughs> Please don't break it. Mm. Trust it. Mm. <laughs> yes. Well, it should be sanitized by default, Un unless they, they are not using trusted types and are using some of the low-low APIs that we talked about earlier. Mm. Oh, but yeah. it's, it's, it's I wonder if Philip can break it, if he's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. OK, let's move to the yeah. next one, awesome. which is actually relevant to yeah. the, the first theme. OK, feeling great and tired, so we understand. Mm -hmm. uh, we share that feeling. Awesome. So third and last question. Let's move it to the screen. And there we go. When did you start using Angular? I'm very curious now. Mm. Oh, look at that. Sweet. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's a nice distribution. Yeah. Normalized distribution. Uh, Impressive. Oh yeah, that one. Let me. Two percent. Wow, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. So good Angular was the Angular before Angular JS zero point nine, uh, and I don't know how many people experienced that one. Oh. Oh. That's a lot of history here in the room uh, with people with Angular. That means there must be questions about the past of Angular, no doubt, for Igor. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Cool. Yeah. 
Perfect. Thank you for participating. Are we going to do a few more of these? And you can use the app to ask questions and vote for questions. And we will ask the most, uh, most upvoted questions. So in the meantime, Carmen, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, so I, I'm actually curious, at what point in that timeline did you join the team? Or was there a team? Was Mishko the team? Well, there was. So I, I started interacting with Angular in 2009 when it was getangular.com. Uh, mm. and, and there was no team at the time. Uh, it was just Mishko and uh, another person, Adam. Adam. Now I'm going to butch butcher his name. Adam. I don't know his last name <laughs> on the spot. Um, yeah, so Mishko, I, we just got to know each other through random series of, or semi-random series of events. And he just said, hey, I'm working on this thing. It's still very rough, and nobody knows about it. Uh, but if you want, you can check it out. So I looked at it, and I just got hooked, because I liked what I saw. It was kind of broken at the time, quite broken. It was not, not very usable, but it solved many problems that I already had because I was a Java developer back in the days. So 2004 through 2010, I did just Java. Uh, web, web Java and HTTP uh, servers, um, JSP, JSF, you know, all kinds of fun technologies. And it was very slow to iterate on that stuff. So I was like, there must be a better way and and then I saw get Angular at the time, and it was just this JavaScript with HTML, uh, specialized HTML that just magically worked. And I'm like, this is it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> so then I, I just started being involved in the project, and it took it took a year for me to finish with Sun and Oracle acquired Sun in the meantime, and. I had some family stuff going on, so eventually, a year later, I joined Google, and by then, Google had adopted uh, Angular as an experiment, internal experiment, and only Mishko was working on it at the time, plus there was a team of trying, people trying to build an application on top of what eventually became AngularJS. Um, so I joined Mishko, and we formed the team, so we were the first two people uh, we had a stand-up as two people, <laughs> which was interesting. Um, and eventually, uh, yeah, people started joining. So we had Voita join a couple months later, and Pete joined us uh, a year or so into uh, me joining Google, and and lots of other people joined afterwards. Wow, nice. Yeah. And how did you how did you bring the the people on the team? Like, how did you choose, or how did that process go? From the community. Uh, so first <laughs> of all, we didn't have any st any staffing, because we were this really just an experiment at Google. Uh, nobody really believed that we could build something. So we were just like kind of hidden in the closet and just working on this application, just supporting. We had just one application that we started with. And even that was like rewrite, and it was not clear whether we would be able to pull it off. Uh, but we did, and and then we slowly started building community. So I came from Sun, and Sun Microsystem was very big on open source and community building. So when I joined Google, it was clear to me that if, for this project, if 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 it were to succeed, there needs to be a community around it. And and we also didn't have funding, so we needed to get volunteers to help us build this thing. Um, so. We started slowly encouraging people to contribute, and we were guiding people on how to contribute to AngularJS. Um, and those people then became so good that we were like, OK, let's hire this person, or that person is amazing. And it's like the best kind of interview, because we never interviewed people for the Angular team, uh, for our team. They, they came through contributions, and, and just we often had years of experience with them. And we are like, yep, yeah, we want that person. They still had to go through Google interviews because we couldn't just hire people for Google. They had to go through official Google interviews. But we mentored them through that, and most of the people made it through, through the Google interviews, uh, even though the interviews are ridiculously hard and, in my opinion, unfair. Uh, so. yeah. Wow. Super. That, 
there's a chance for all of us. Eh? Like, if you ever want to be part of the Angular team, start contributing. That's, uh, that's yes. the message. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That uh, always, when we, when we have headcount, uh, when we can hire people on a team, community is the first where we go okay. to look for, for people. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. It's actually really nice to know I had it in my question. Like, uh, when, when did you realize that the community was important? But it actually sounds to me that you, you built Angular with the community in mind from yeah. the very beginning. Yeah, that was definitely, definitely one of the first things. Like, I came to Google and I did two things. I, I started cutting releases because there were no releases um, prior to me joining Google. It was just like this JavaScript file that was just built and deployed on, on GitHub so you could just download like a single JavaScript file, unversioned, everything. Uh, and there was no community, so we started with mailing lists and Twitter and, and uh, eventually meetups, uh, but that, that took a while before we got to meetups. And even then, I couldn't believe when, when I organized the first meetup, I thought maybe 10 people will show up. And we had like 80 people show up, and, and just the room was full, and everybody was chattering. I was like, wow, this is interesting. I did not expect this many people to show up. So it's been very interesting. Yeah, wow. I'll also have a look at the uh, questions from the audience about the past. Oh, we do have some questions coming. Actually, a lot of questions coming in. The, the Carmen, do you have another question left before we go into the community? Uh, no, well, I just wanted to ask one more question. Is okay, sure. Um, yeah, we can go with that first. Um, I was curious, but maybe, well, anyway, um, I was curious, like, when did you realize that it's a thing? Like, was there, was there a point in time where you said, oh, this is a thing, this is, <laughs> or this is becoming a thing? There was one moment at one of the meetups that we organized in, in Mountain View where a person came to me uh, after, after the presentations, or, or before the presentation, I don't remember, and, and he started thanking me. Uh, and I was all confused, why is this stranger thanking me? And then he tells me his story about how he was unemployed for a long time. <clears throat> He's been in tech for some time, and just was struggling, couldn't find a job. And then he learned AngularJS, uh, and he found a job. And now he has employment, and he's like his life has changed, and he just came to personally thank me, and I was like, "What just happened here? Like we are changing lives here. Like this is serious." <laughs> so that that was one of the one of the moments when I was like, "We might be onto something here," um, and you know, then eventually the numbers started going up and Twitter and all of that stuff. So, but it was always like this these stories that always touch me the most. And I had so many people come over the years to, you know, after my presentations and keynotes and whatnot, and just tell me all these amazing stories that they, they had that were connected to Angular. And I was like, good, I, wow. that's just, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, 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 but uh, to go into that, uh, to be honest, I mean, you're changing lives, that's very true, and, uh, and I, I'm just wondering, like, you say you started with the two of you, mm -hmm. and then now you've grown to, like, one of the world's most leading JavaScript frameworks? Like, how, how does that feel? Like, you, you, you start into something, hey, we all do it, like we have this library, we have this hobby project, and then you start it, and then suddenly it grows into something that you're responsible for half of the world's web interfaces, and then suddenly, like, how does yeah. that feel? Like, what, I mean, what goes through you when... when it's, it's a mixed mixture of different things. It's, it's definitely pride uh, and just feeling of satisfaction, but it's also a lot of pressure uh, because there's a lot of responsibility. Uh, you know, Angular is now the most used solution to build web interfaces at Google. We have thousands of Googlers, not even con counting external world, using Angular, and about 2,500 applications built with, with Angular. And our team supports all of them. And our team is very small. Like this is the thing that people don't realize how crazy small the Angular team is. We have about I, I don't know the exact number, but roughly 17 people working on the team. And the team takes care of the framework, the components, the tooling, supporting all of the two and a half thousand applications at Google and the external community, and doing the Twitter and blog posts and 
presentations and all of that stuff. And then also triaging all the issues and pull requests, and it's, it's a lot. So, so we have 17 Googlers, but then we have, we have non-Googlers on the team. We have a few contractors uh, that have been amazing and super helpful. And then we have hundreds of volunteers that help us. But, but really the bottleneck is the number of Googlers, because the way we develop uh, Angular is there's only one version of Angular at Google, and all of the 2,500 applications use that version. And that version is the same that is on GitHub. So we cannot break Angular, because otherwise we would break Google. So what that means is that every single change needs to be tested at Google before we merge it on GitHub. So we need to like, pre-flight all of, every single change needs to be pre-flighted uh, internally. And only if it looks good, we merge it on GitHub, and then we bring it to Google, and then all of the applications use it right away. Wow. Uh, and then eventually, we cut releases once a week. So after a week, we cut a release, and that's the public release. Uh, so that, that is the traditional flow. But it means that you have 17 people that are able of, to, to see both sides of the puzzle, the Angular side, the Google side, and the open source side. And that, that is where a lot of the bottleneck comes from. And, and the community doesn't see it. You know, yep. People can be easily frustrated by, oh, my pull request has been around for three months or two years or whatever it is. Uh, and we try to do our best, but there's only so much time in the day and we can't do it all. So yeah. we try to prioritize high quality contributions. We also try to build processes and uh, infrastructure to support creation of high quality contributions. But we also understand that people are passionate and they want to fix their bugs. And you know, so many times we, we had contribution where, like, I remember one time in AngularJS, in AngularJS there was this thing called digest loop which was like the, the thing where all of the magic happened. And one time we got a con contribution, this, this pull request from a person, and he's like, I fixed Angular for you. I rewrote the digest loop. It's asynchronous now, and it's so much better. And it was like this giant pull request uh, with like, I don't know how many lines of code changed. And there was no way we could adopt that change because it was ginormous breaking change. It, they never consulted us. And then they demanded that we, we merge it. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know how to explain. We cannot merge this. There is no way we can merge this. We appreciate this. It's a nice experiment, but we have to close this pull request. And sometimes people get angry. I, I don't, I'm not saying that this person got angry, but there are other cases where people got, got angry that we were not able to accept their contribution. And it's hard for us because we want to uh, accept as many contributions as we can, but some of them are just not possible. Got it. Yeah, yeah, and huge thank you to the Angular team then also for dealing with that pressure. I mean, we must not forget that we all get like this free, insanely uh, awesome library, um, and that has been then battle tested yeah. with t more than 2,000 apps every single release. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and the Angular team is amazing. It's the best team I've ever been part of. And, you know, it, whenever you interact with any of us on GitHub, Please be kind because there's a lot going on on the other side, and you know we try to be nice to the community, but we don't always get the same kind of treatment back. So oh. it helps us when we see people being positive and and helpful and understanding. Because sometimes it is hard that we cannot fix certain bugs or we cannot accept certain contributions. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna change that, right? <laughs> we're gonna be kind and nice when we join you on GitHub. So awesome! Thanks for the explanation. Yeah. Um, Let's have a look at the questions from the audience. Um, first of all, we're going a bit over, if that's okay. I mean, if you have to leave uh, at a specific time, it's totally fine to leave. Um, but we have a lot of questions, so if you're open to staying a bit longer, there will not be a reception after the conference. Uh, that's due to government rules. We have to, it's not allowed. It is still fine to stay here, to, um, yeah, to spend time together to uh, mingle with the speakers as well. Uh, so we're going to take a little more time to go through the Q&A uh, now that you have the time uh, with Igor present with us. Uh, but again, if you need to leave, feel free to leave. Uh, no hard feelings at all. So first question about the past from Steve from the audience. What made the Angular team decide to abandon AngularJS and start over new? <sighs> Fear <laughs> of becoming irrelevant eventually. Uh, that was the main motivation. Like it was clear to us that AngularJS was was great uh, up to a certain point, 
but there was a ceiling and we were hitting that ceiling more and more frequently. And, and what we saw was that when we initially set out to build AngularJS, the kind of UIs and applications that people were building were much smaller and much simpler. And because Angular made, AngularJS made it so easy to build very rich UIs, people just kept on building bigger and bigger applications. And that really accelerated the whole transition from the server side to the client side. I'm not saying just, just AngularJS, but AngularJS was part of the, the, the frameworks and, and libraries that did this trans transition from server side to the client side. And, and we saw that, that it was not going to last forever. And we needed to evolve in a way that would support the future needs and would scale better, would, would help us build bigger applications with more people on the team, uh, do it more safely, be more tooling friendly, be more refactoring friendly, and also add some runtime performance because AngularJS was hitting uh, the performance ceiling as well. So that was one of the, the driving motivations. and. And you know, back then we didn't know what we were doing. So, so starting from scratch seemed like the the only option. Um, I think it was the right option, at the, the the right choice at the time. Uh, I think we could have executed better. The the whole transition could have been executed better. But but I would still start from scratch if I if I went back. Um, yeah, does yeah. that answer it? Yeah, I think so. Eh? So, um, although I love the root scope, eh? it was so convenient. To be honest. <laughs> yes, global sco uh, go global uh, uh, global namespace is always convenient or global state uh, until it's not, right? Uh, yeah. And then everything falls apart. Rest in peace. Rest. Root. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> uh, great question. Thank you, Steve. So, second qu second most upvoted question by Carol. Uh, if you could go back to any point in time mm -hmm. and you could change one thing, what would it be? I saw this question earlier when I was, like, this was one of the first questions that was submitted. So thank you, Carl. And it's a great question. And, and, and I thought, you know, like, what would I, what would I change? And, and I think I wouldn't change anything um, mm -hmm. because, because we made lots of, and I'm not saying that we haven't made mistakes over the years. We have lots, lots of them, but all of them, at least for me, were opportunities to learn. And if we didn't make those mistakes, then I wouldn't know what I know now. And in fact, when I was looking back on Angular 2 and just reflecting the, the whole Angular 2 and Angular JS transition, um, I, I read this book called Badass User by Kathy Sierra. If you haven't heard, a bit, uh, heard about it or haven't read it, go and buy it. Kathy Sierra, badass user. And when I read it, it was, for me, it was a story of AngularJS versus Angular 2. Uh, everything that she's, and the, the, the book is about learning uh, and how to make products successful and what makes products click mm -hmm. and what makes products fail. Uh, so when I was reading this, I just saw all of the things that we did right for AngularJS. Not because we were intentional to do it right, we just felt like this was the right thing. But then I read in the book, like, we did the right thing. <laughs> Kathy says, Kathy says that this is, this is the thing you need to do. So, uh, and then she also gives the counterexamples of, of how not to do certain things. And many of the things that happened in Angular 2 were the things that she says, do, don't do this. Um, so it was, it was very interesting to see that. And if I didn't have that experience, I would not know what I know now. And I would not appreciate it as much as uh, so. I wouldn't go back and change anything. I think uh, everything's good as it is. Wow. So let's just go forward and use the learnings from the past to make a better future. Wow, that's that's beautifully said. Um, an awesome question, eh? Thank you, um, Garo, for asking that question. Third question: seventeen upvotes by Michael Hlavky. So, what was the worst part? in your Angular career, and how did you overcome it? The worst part. I think the worst was just the feeling of not being understood. Um, whether it was with, with community and the community not understanding why we couldn't do certain things or why we had to do certain things. But also with Google, because 
Google has been great uh, for, for, for us for many reasons, but I always felt misunderstood by Google. And, and that has been challenging. And, and it definitely made me think a lot about, you know, why is, it, why is this so hard? Why is this so hard? So that, that, like, that frustration was probably the, the hardest part, this feeling of not being heard or understood. Wow. Ooh, powerful. Um, it just puts into perspective what we always think from the other side. Like, hey, we ask so much. We And then, yeah, hearing that other side as well is really... Thank you for sharing that, for the openness. Um, fourth question by Martin. What's the most curious bug you encountered using Angular? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so many. Only one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I see Pete over there, and he's like, service worker. <laughs> Yes, we had this crazy, crazy bug in that, that would cause Angular I/O to to crash uh, for certain users, and it would it would not it would just like hang loading, and you've probably seen it because everybody has seen it. Uh, if you if you go to Angular I/O often enough, you you would see the bug, and we spent years trying to track that down, and and finally this year over the summer, George from from the Angular team he figured it out and fixed it. And it was the most mind-blowing thing. Uh, if you go to, to Twitter uh, and search my timeline for probably bug and service worker, you'll, you'll find a link to like the whole analysis. And it's, it's insane. And kudos to George uh, for, for fixing it, because it's been there for at least two years. And we just didn't know what was going on. And it was the most insane. Like, I'm not going to go into details because it wouldn't make sense. Um, but if you are curious about something super weird, then check that one out. <laughs> a bug for two years? That's a bug for sure. That's a serious bug to deal with. Um, we do still have new questions coming in. I, I just want to check with the audience. Like, if you do raise of hands, who can stay longer? If um, OK. So we have like 60% of the audience, even more, 70%. So uh, we'll take two more questions then from the past, and then we'll segue into the, to the present. OK. Uh, next question by uh, Michael. Did you ever break all the Google apps? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> several times, but one time we broke 92% of Google. Not just in the two and a half thousand applications, but everything from self-driving cars to search to everything. Uh, crazy story. Um, Matthias was involved, and to this day we giggle over how it all happened. Um, I don't. I don't want to go into details because it's a it's a long story. But yes, we we <laughs> did break Google, and it took. It took 45 minutes for us to recover, and it was 45 minutes of watching a script to run, because we knew that once the script was done running, everything would be good. But it was just 45 minutes of terror. And, and, and everybody just yelling at us, like, hey, we cannot, self-driving cars are not working. Like, what are you doing? Oh <laughs> and we're like, just, just like 12 more minutes. And we had like, countdown, like seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's coming, it's gonna be good. And it, it, it was good uh, after, after the script finished running. But in the meantime, Google was broken and it took it took Google and all of the, the CI system and everything to recover. It took one and a half days or two days oh my goodness. of all the yeah. backlogs that we caused. Yeah. So Google was kind of slower for <laughs> <laughs> two days. <laughs> and the best part is that nobody ever yelled at us uh, for that. Yeah. We, we just created a retrospective and postmortem and shared with everybody what happened and what we are doing about fixing it. And that was just so empowering because nobody was mad and the, the elders were like, yeah, like this is what happens sometimes. And you, know, wow. you learned your lesson, you will not yeah. do this again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, but that's great. Uh, we all learn by doing, but you learn even more by doing wrong, right? So it's like that's the moments when yeah. you learn most. Let's um, check with Carmen. Yeah. Can we have the script? <laughs> Can we have the script <laughs> yeah. to we recover? We could probably find it. It's pro it's definitely it's yeah. We could we could find it if you really want it. But <laughs> it, it it was it's an internal sp specific script that actually syncs GitHub and Google uh, all the all the code, and that 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 script was flawed. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's the script. You know, seems to solve a lot of problems. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a question, Carmen? I don't want to. Um, 
I would actually propose that we segue into the present. Yeah, so we have one more question about the past, if that's okay, well, because yeah, we have sure, quite a bit of okay. upvotes. Um, question by sure. Niels. Are there any lessons learned from AngularJS that are still relevant today for Angular development? Yes, getting right started now. journey matters. Getting started, getting started journey matters a lot. Okay. It was so easy to get started with AngularJS. With Angular 2, it was so difficult, and we underestimated uh, the value of, of that. So that, okay. that is the biggest learning. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, that was a quick answer, so definitely powerful. Thank you, great question, Niels. All right, let's segue into the present, part number two. Uh, Carmen, we'll go into your questions, and then uh, afterwards we'll go to uh, your questions as well. Yeah, I actually we'll have need a to switch if you... Oh, yeah, well... Are we not... Uh, let's have a look if we... Well, let's, let's start with Carmen. Yeah, perfect. Because I don't... Oh, we'll need to. It's not mirrored, so I don't see it here. Okay. Oh, yeah. genius. Perfectly. Oh, perfect. don't see it yet, so... Perfectly perfect. <laughs> yes, perfect. I have no okay. idea what Okay, happened. let's go back to Carmen. Okay. Um, I actually wanted to start with a quote from Kung Fu Panda, which I really, really like about the present. And it says that um, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. Oh. I really like this. That's so nice. <laughs> it is. It's very nice. It's the turtle dude that says that. It's very cool. <laughs> so I'm actually, I have a question mm -hmm. because to me, it really sounds like there's a lot of pressure. Like, I don't know, I would completely freeze if I would break all the Google apps. Um, so I'm, I'm just, and, and then of course, when you're it, like supporting so many teams and then you have the community as well, um, I, I would imagine that that's like a lot of pressure and a lot of things to deal with. So I'm just curious, like what does the team do for their mental health, like to cope with this stuff? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think everybody has slightly different coping, coping mechanism, but the thing that helps the most is just the support of your peers, uh, just knowing that you are not there alone. So we often, when something bad happens, there is always usually somebody around that you can, you can lean on and help, and, and, and some people are just excellent at this that, that are on the team. So you can always rely on a buddy on the team to help you, whether it's just help with reviewing uh, answer to a tricky issue on GitHub that is sensitive and you want somebody's opinion, or um, whether it's, you know, we broke Google, what are we gonna do? <laughs> uh, it's, the, the best thing is really just having good people around you that can help, that helps the, the most. Uh, but then there are other things like, you know, not taking things too seriously and letting go. Um, I, I personally discovered meditation and, and exercise to be a great way of dealing with, with stress. So that is a big part of it. Uh, sleeping helps. Uh, Pete would probably be like, but you didn't sleep much last night. <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes there are times when I don't sleep much, but usually I try to get a lot of sleep because sleep is important. Got it. Okay. How do you, um, how do you not take it seriously, so seriously at that scale? I'm, I'm really curious, um, like also as a general thing. So, I think my story is different than, than others, and this is what I'm, I'm trying to be very sensitive to when we have new people joining the team, because I was exposed to the pressure incrementally over several years. But imagine a new person coming to the team now, and we put them on a the stage and they're like, okay, answer questions, and it's hard. And you know, people like Joost, who presented, who's on the team, he presented for the first time today, that's, it takes a lot of courage to just step in the spotlight, a spotlight and say, hey, I'm on the Angular team, this is what I do, and I applaud to every single team member that can do that. Um, so, yeah. Um, they say that um, the fruit of tomorrow comes from the, the seed that you plant today. 
Um, and I'm, I'm curious, what are the seeds that the Angular team or just Angular in general is planting now so that it becomes what it will become for the future? That's an excellent question. Um, so for, for me personally, I think ng update is the biggest secret weapon that Angular has for its future because ng update allows us to, to change Angular, evolve Angular, and do it without Angular 2 kind of a breaking change. So I don't foresee a need for Angular to go through another Angular 2 kind of a breaking change. As long as there is sustained investment in the project and sustained support in the project to keep on evolving, um, we have all of the infrastructure necessary to make very big changes to the project. Ivy was a complete rewrite of, of Angular and it fundamentally changed our ability uh, to evolve the framework for the next few years. So with, with Ivy as a foundation and NG Update as a, as a vehicle, we're able to deliver big changes and, and nobody, nobody out there has this. There is not a single JavaScript library or framework that has this capability. And to me, that is, that is the seed we planted. And if we keep on watering it, it can grow into something wonderful in the future. Wow. Yeah, and we can all agree, yeah, if you use it, it's, it's a fantastic tool to stay up to date. But it does take watering. Like, yeah. you must keep on watering, because if yeah. you don't, then the plant will die. Yeah. No, it's true. And it's, it, uh, it only highlights how, uh, how much this team covers. Eh? If you know, like, 17 Googlers and then a couple of non-Googlers and all of this, it's, uh, it's amazing. It is a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. Wow. Carmen, do you still have a question left, or do we go into questions from the audience on the present? No, there's a question in the audience that kind of hits yeah. a couple okay. of questions that I had, so you just go ahead. Okay. Okay, we'll start with the first question, which is uh, which has 30 upvotes. Um, question by Steve. I don't know if it's the same Steve, but thank you, Steve. Uh, why do you think more and more devs are choosing other frameworks over Angular? Because we went through a period where we were not competitive and people needed solutions that were better than what Angular could offer. So, you know, when, when you have needs and, and Angular cannot satisfy them, then, then people start looking elsewhere. So I, I understand why, why some of the developers uh, left and started using React or Vue or, or other solutions. Um, and I hope that as we evolve Angular and as Angular gets better, they will give us a chance and they will look back and see, oh, you know, Angular is not the same thing that it was in Angular 2, Angular 4, Angular 5 uh, days. You know, now it's Angular 13. In the future, it's going to be Angular 18. And it's going to be very different Angular. Uh, the people that stay will be just smoothly getting, you know, all these fruits of, of uh, the work and things will get better. And the people that left will look back and if they give us a chance, they'll see a completely different Angular. Yeah. Cool. And great question, by the way. Yeah? Um, thank you, Steve. Next question is by Robin. Why isn't Google investing more in Angular and the Angular team? I don't speak for Google, so I cannot answer this one. Uh, you can ask Google. Yeah, it's a great question. Eh? Like if they have 2,000 apps running on Angular and then yeah, having yeah. 17 Googlers, I uh, guess it's also a matter of finding the right people then. Uh, is that a challenge also to... I think we have the people in the in the community. Yeah. Uh, finding people is not the problem. Okay. So yeah. it, it's a matter of uh, just making sure that the team is supported by Google to to grow and support the scale. Yeah, got it. Okay, great question. Thank you, Robin. Um, one question by the NGB core team: What are you most proud of in the current version of Angular? So in version 13, we finished, we deleted the Vue Engine. Uh, so that was a huge accomplishment. Uh, we, we started working on, on IV and Vue Engine removal back in 2017. So here we are four years later. Well, 2017 was when the discussion started and just brainstorming and we really started working on it in 2018. Um, but we only had, you know, with, with the size of the team we have and the, the supporting all of the applications we have, like you, you cannot have 10 people working on Ivy. So most of the time it was just a few people working on Ivy uh, and there was only a period of 
probably nine months when most of the team was working on Nive to finish version nine. Yeah. Uh, that, that was a crunch period for us. Um, and after version nine, we still needed to roll out IV in Google 3 and get all of these 2,500 applications on IV without breaking them, which was a monumental task. And, and most people think that it was impossible to do, uh, but we did it. So we, we transitioned all of them without breaking. I think we had one minor uh, production outage um, that was fixed almost instantly, but nobody was broken and all of the all of the Googlers are now thirty percent more productive because the added refresh latency with IV is on ever at Google scale it's thirty percent uh, faster. Production builds are half the time, and there are lots of features that we were added, lots of bugs that were fixed. And if you if you look at the the scale of Angular, you know thousands of Googlers working on it. It's it's crazy. It's crazy what we accomplished. So, so yeah, and in version 13, we finally completed both the external migration to, to IV and the internal one, and we were able to delete VEngine. There are still pull requests in flight right now that are deleting the different parts, but VEngine right now is non-functional, and we just need to untangle some of the dependencies to remove everything. So this, for me, that was like the biggest accomplishment. Yeah. Uh, it's not something that community appreciates as, as much because V9 delivered most of the, the improvements with, with IV for in the external community. Um, but the other change that, that we landed was the moderniz modernization of the APF format, Angular package format. So all of the NPM packages that Angular team ships, but also many of the community libraries ship, they have a particular format and we completely revamped and modernize that format so it uses the latest JavaScript, uh, ES2020, and many other things. So yep. uh, that was a monumental task, and, and Paul from the team, a uh, fellow from, from Germany, just did a spectacular job of just, if you, I, I tweeted, if, if you want to see this beautiful giant change done in a single pull request, then look through my timeline and, and look through, look for, art uh, as a keyword, uh, and you'll find a link to, to a pull request that I called that this is like a piece of art, because Paul made this change that touched 800 files, if I remember correctly, in 70 commits in a single PR, and every single commit is like nicely documented, and this is why we're doing this, this is, and, and it's just beautiful. Uh, and that's what we landed in V13, and, and it helped the entire ecosystem get healthier and better. And, and I know that, that some people got a little upset because we, we broke certain things, and we do apologize for that. But also it was necessary for us to keep Angular healthy and push the whole ecosystem forward. Because if we don't make these kind of breaking changes, then we will be just stuck with whatever we built a couple of years ago, and we will not be able to evolve. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow. That was one big review for that PR. It's, uh, you know what? I, I, the <laughs> pull request was so beautiful, it took me literally, I think, three or four hours. I mentioned in the tweet, uh, three or four hours oh. to review it because it, it was just so well laid out and every change was documented and I just like click, click, click and read through and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, continue, continue, continue. And this is, this is what I mean. That on the Angular team, there are just such excellent engineers and humans and it's a very rare combination of the two skills, like yeah. excellent engineers and humans. So big, big shout outs to the Angular team. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, question from Michael. Do you sometimes meet the React and Vue teams to share your thoughts or to share thoughts? Not recently. We did meet with the React team uh, many times in the past. Uh, recently, we've been just busy with, with IV in, in Google 3 uh, in the internal repository. So we, we kind of had to deprioritize some of these external contacts. But um, over the summer, we, we hired a new director of web engineering for, for Google, which Angular falls under. And, and her name is Sarah Dresner, and she's one of the big celebrities in the Vue community, mm -hmm. an excellent engineer, excellent human. Um, and she brings a lot of the Vue perspectives to Angular. Um, and we're talking about could we collaborate more? There's definitely interest in, in both sides, so we'll see. Oh, interesting. 
Your right. turn. Yes, we'll take two more. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe one more. We, yeah, okay, one more. All right, let's do really one more. Uh, so thank you, Michael, for the question. One more. So Sven, what does a day... Oh, this is an interesting one, I guess, for many of all of us. Uh, what does a workday look like as an Angular team member? Interesting. I think it depends on the individual <laughs> team member and also where you are, because our team is globally distributed. So we have, we have people in California, we have people um, on the, the East Coast, we have people in... Um, in Europe, many people in Europe. So depending on where you are, you have a very different experience. And we were actually talking with, with Pete and Jost, uh, whom I met in person after were two years, three years, finally, about this. Because for them, like they get up in the morning, they make coffee and, and you know, out with their families or whatever. And it's like very relaxing morning. And then it's around 4 p.m. or something like that when when the California wakes up, and that's when like the whole team gets together. So we have these like core hours where everybody overlaps, and that's where that's usually the busiest time of the day for for everybody. But it's a, a different time of the day for depending on where people are. So that's when we have stand-ups and team meetings and discuss things uh, and collaborate one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So yeah, we we use Slack uh, to to chat a lot, and a lot of the communication is asynchronous. Um, and COVID has been great for us, for our team, uh, which I know hasn't been for, for many of the teams out there, but for our team it was particularly good because prior to COVID, our team was half distributed. We had half of the team outside of the offices, uh, Google offices, and half in the offices. And it was terrible because if you are in the office and you have all of these people around you, it's so easy to forget that there's somebody out there and you forget to invite them to meetings or you forget to turn on the microphone or, or the microphone is terrible quality. So, uh, and you don't know because you're in the room uh, and you don't have that experience. So COVID just leveled the playing field for everybody and now everybody's remote and it's, I, I enjoy it. I personally enjoy it. Uh, and I think that that actually was a good thing for, for this team. Interesting, thank you so much. All right, that's it for the present. Uh, let's head to the future, part number three. So Carmen, you wanna, you wanna kick off with the future? Yeah, I will. Mm, I'll keep it short so that we can actually give more uh, chances to, to the audience questions. Um, yeah, my question is related to the fact that you're leaving. Um, and I'm curious, like, what are the big learnings that are you taking with you for whatever awaits for you? Like, how is the Igor now different from the Igor from, I think you said 2010, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, how is that different? And what are, what are the learnings that you are taking with you? Because there's always something you're taking with you when, when you close the door and you open another. Yeah. Uh, so for those of, for those of those of you that haven't caught the news, I I did um, announce that I'm leaving Google. Uh, and that that was announced two days ago, three days ago. I'm a little jet lagged, so I don't really know. It was on Tuesday, I think. Um, but I, I do want to remain part of the Angular community as much as I can after I leave Google. We'll, we'll see how it all plays out. Like people always have these uh, romantic fantasies about the future and then it's not realistic. But we'll see what happens. I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm leaving Google. Um, and how am I different now than when I joined? I think I'm very different, definitely very different. And the the biggest learning is that people matter uh, a lot and often a lot more than technology, um, which might be surprising because everybody, like we, we've been working on Angular for, for so long, um, but I always saw it as just this code that we were collaborating on together, but it was really the human relationships that we were building along the way that were much more valuable than the code itself. Not everybody saw, saw it that way, um, you know, there are people even in the community that just care about the code and don't care about anything else. And that's fine. If, if that's what you need, then that's great. But for me personally, like the human connections and Jurgen and Carmen and Pete and other people, you know, Jost and 
so many others that I met uh, just mean so much more to me than the code we build. The code, you know, we can rebuild. Uh, and, but these this relationships, they, they will be with us for a long time. Wow, that's heartwarming. Thank you. And, yeah. uh, yeah. That goes for all of us. Eh? It's mutual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you can go ahead to your Yeah, hand. okay. Let's go with the uh, questions from the audience then. So we have 14 questions. We'll go with the top questions. Top question again by Carol. Carol is very good at asking questions. Uh, very much upvoted, 28 upvotes. <laughs> How will Angular remain relevant in the next five years? So we kind of touched on this in the, the present section. It's, it's all about watering. Uh, like we planted the seed, the seed is there. Uh, if we keep on watering it, it can grow and bloom into something wonderful. Um, so it's partly on the Angular team and, and how we keep on evolving Angular. It's also on the community how you help us through your feedback, but also by updating. Because one of the things that is very challenging for us is if we if we need to support old versions of, of Angular, um, we we just don't have resources to do that. So this is why we make the updates as easy as possible, so that we can just focus on the, the latest Angular and maybe back backport a few patches here and there, but do it only if it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. Uh, so you can help by by staying up to date, so that we can just keep on pushing. You can help us by providing feedback when the updates are too hard and we need to do something different so to make them smoother. But it's also about, um, about Google and how Google uh, supports the project and, and what, what um, kind of investment comes into Angular. Yeah, got it. And great question again. Um, it's also good to learn that even when you leave the Google team, that Angular is in good hands with, with so many great people in the yeah. Angular team. Yeah, yeah. I, I left the best people. So, <laughs> so Angular is in, in the, the best, best hands possible. Uh, so, and that makes it easier for me to leave. You know, like I, I never wanted to leave the project in a state where I wouldn't feel confident about the future. And there were times when I was definitely worried about the, the future of Angular, but I feel like right now the team is the healthiest it's ever been. Uh, Google cares more than it ever has, and, and it's, it's great. Uh, so now is actually a good time to leave. Uh, <laughs> like, good luck, everybody. <laughs> Mic drops. <laughs> leave at the peak. <laughs> uh, yeah. Awesome. No, but this is great, and great for the future of Angular and for all of us as well here tonight. So yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not disappearing, and, and I told the team, you okay. know, whenever you need something, just come and I, I'll be happy to advise uh, and support in whatever way I can. Okay. Yeah, and he also said he's coming back next year for the waffles. So it's Only if there are double waffles for dessert. Yes, uh, whipped and whipped cream. With whipped cream. Oh okay. strawberry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second most up for the question, what's the big news? We saw you're leaving Angular. I guess you already uh, Yeah, we answered. touched yeah. on it. Okay. Um, if there are other questions, we can yeah. okay. probably skip that. Um, then, will there be something like React Native to reuse as much Angular code as possible to create native mobile apps like NativeScript in the past? So we, we tried this. We tried it both with React Native uh, and NativeScript. And, and this is my personal opinion. I'm not convinced that that's the, the right path forward. Um, I think the long-term path forward is for the web platform to get better, so we don't need native applications on mobile devices. No. Uh, we're not very far from, from that. There are still certain experiences that are very difficult to build with web technologies on, on cell phones, uh, but in many cases, you can build very good user experience with Angular or, or even non-Angular web technologies. Uh, and. And it's an experience that works on iOS, on Android, on desktop, on tablets. You don't need to rewrite things many times. Um, it's still not as easy as it should be, but web is evolving just like Angular is evolving. So I'm very hopeful about a future where we don't need to address these kind of questions because it's going to be obvious that web is the best way to build mobile applications. Got it. Yeah, yeah it makes all the sense with the PDBA. We just need to avoid the service worker bugs. It's uh, <laughs> well, we, we're all the good bug is fixed now. Uh, okay, so oh yeah, that. then the future is bright. <laughs> 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 we can start building those apps. Awesome. Um, Antoine asks, how can Angular improve time to interactive? 
Do you see Angular evolve towards compile time framework, closer to Svelte, or even quick? Yeah. Um, Great question, by the way. I, I think it is critical uh, for Angular to have a much better server-side and hydration story. So progressive hydration and server-side rendering as a first-class citizen. We have Angular Universal today, but it's not, it is semi-supported by the team, but not really. It's in this weird state where Google doesn't use it internally. Um, and we, we build it only for, for the external community, yep. uh, which removes some of the incentives to make it great, or and, you know, there's just not sufficient funding to, to make it great. And, and we need to focus on the things that are being used both in, in the Google and externally. And I think that needs to change. If we, if we are serious about the future of Angular, then the future is server-side rendering, progressive hydration, um, much, much better time to interactive, less JavaScript on the initial download, uh, all of those things. And those things are possible with Angular. Angular can evolve to, to get there. Uh, it, just, it just takes an investment and focus on those things. Yeah. Wow. But it's very reassuring to learn that the team is thinking about that. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Great question, Antoine. Uh, next question by Maria. What Angular features are likely to deprecate in the short-term and long-term perspective? Great question. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. So what you will see is that we'll be deprecating features that are no longer necessary. Um, now that IV is finished, um, many, many APIs out there existed just because of the architecture that Vue Engine had. And, and some of these implementation details leaked into the public API. For example, all of the concepts of factories, uh, ng factories for components and modules and, and ng modules and whatnot. Um, th there are so many public APIs that take a component factory as an as a, uh, API, and that API is no longer necessary with Ivy. So you will see us removing these, deprecating them, and, and in many cases, we will have fully automated migrations that will just update your code base to just delete uh, and refactor the code in, in the new IV way. And the new way is just as powerful, it's often even more powerful than the old way and simpler for, for humans because these factories, they were like this, this weird artifact that often confused people. It was this layer of indirection that was not human friendly. It was there because of tools and compilers and whatnot. And IV changed that. So you will see those, those APIs to, to go away. Um, we're talking about ng modules and making ng modules optional, so standalone components and directives and pipes. Um, that is something that is fully designed now and is scheduled for implementation um, as early as early next year. I, I don't, I don't want to, now that I quit, I don't want to be like, oh, you know, you have to deliver. But, but it is very high priority, uh, one, of, one of the most important things that, that uh, we want to do. Um, and, and it will get done because it's such a high impact project. Um, and once that is done, then we'll see how, how it's accepted by the community yep. and whether we can transition all of the use cases to this module, uh, ng module less way of, of doing things. Got and it. if we can, then maybe time will come, not anytime soon, but time will come when ng modules will be like, why would you ever want to use ng module? Yeah. So yep. then it can go away. It's, it's still a long way away, but that is, that is the trajectory yep. that we are on, and we are hopeful that we can satisfy all of the use cases that engine modules currently support yep. in other ways that are more natural, easier, and then engine modules can just disappear. Yep. Wow. Looking forward to that. I mean, it's, it's great to see how far you think ahead and then you plan. Yeah, many of these uh, things, you know, it, it takes years yeah. of yeah. planning because we cannot make... Imagine we remove engine modules in version 14. You wouldn't know. You yeah. would not like it. And it's also, it would be a ton of work, so the team would not be able to do it. So we have to like chop it up into small chunks and deliver this, 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 and eventually, like, okay, now we can remove ng modules. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Igor. We'll take one more question, and then the other ones, you can still talk to Igor outside of the venue room. That's, uh, that's totally fine. So final question uh, by Sam V. Are you joining Mishko at quick.dev? <laughs> 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 No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not 
ready to talk about what I'm doing next. And not because I don't know. I, I actually already started my, my next job. Uh, but I don't want that to be a distraction for this com community right now. I think Angular is wonderful. We built something amazing. And I want to celebrate that with everybody. Yeah. I don't want to to have that overshadowed by whatever I'm going to be trying next. Yeah. Uh, the time will come when we'll talk about it. And maybe next next year when I come, then yeah. uh, I'll show some of the, the early fruits of that effort. Oh. We'll see. I don't know. That would be amazing. Uh, yeah, we, we invited Igor to any upcoming edition from this. Uh, as from long this as there are waffles. Double, as long as there double are waffles. We'll make sure that we get waffles. Uh, <laughs> with that note, thank you so much for this Q&A. We have a, a small present for you. Um, as the founding father of um, Angular, let's see. So we have this. We know that you, you always travel light, but <laughs> we have this. All right. Uh, this bottle here, it's a very special bottle. So it's, uh, it's NGB olive oil. Um, thank you, Igor, for being the founding father of something beautiful that has helped all of us grow over the years. You've helped, uh, you've grown tremendously as a human being, but also you've grown this community, this wonderful community, and there's not a lot of communities like this. I honestly think we're the best community in the world out there. I agree. And I remember a few years ago you said it's by design, so uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, the code is awesome. As you said, we can rebuild it, but what you've built is like no one else could have done. So. Uh, it's with uh, a very big heart on behalf of the entire community. We offer you this uh, this bottle of NGB olive oil. Mm. Please take all that goodness with you Thank into you your so next much. adventure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You should tell what it is because I don't think they know. Do they uh, know? Yeah, we got, well, if you just still have the time in one minute, one minute yeah, one we'll minute. do it in one minute. So what um, with the NGBE our, uh, organization, we've uh, adopted olive oil trees in the middle of Italy. They're, uh, they're completely um, harvested by hand. So the olives are being plucked and then they're uh, put into olive oil uh, by hand manually and then they ship it to us. And then we put it in bottles here and we offer it to you to share it with us. Um, and so you can also enjoy it when you're at the buffet. There were bottles. I don't know if you saw them. Uh, with NGB olive oil, so we'll do that in any upcoming edition. Uh, and we know that Igor is a great cook. Um, now we know where the digest cycle comes from. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, so um, yeah, hope you enjoy this and uh, spread some love because it should keep you healthy as well. So thank you so much. That. And thank you all for being thank here. Thank you. Um, let's round off the. Thank you, Carmen, for being yes. with us in the Q and A section as well. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Carmen. Yeah, and let's give it up one more time for Igor. I mean, yeah. that, 